Chief Justice's ruling confirms House to House registration is a waste of time, says Jack Deal. No decision made at first GCA meeting. Civil society stage protests as pressure mounts in Granger to name date for elections. Education Minister mixes up Cape Top student. And in sport, no retirement of Chris Gale until further notice. These and more coming up after the break. Stay with us. Let FiberTech help you to renovate, refresh, and redecorate your kitchen. Spice up your kitchen with decorative colors, finishes, and accessories. Choose from an array of designs and beautiful granite colors that are blended to suit your choice. FiberTech Lifetime Kitchen is durable, thermites-free, and water-resistant. Enjoy one-year factory warranty along with our after-sale service. So come on in and let us help you choose wisely. Are you invited to that important event but don't know what to wear or frustrated you're wearing the same dress as everyone else? You crave for this exclusive look? Then do just that with dresses from Exclusive Dresses to Impress. Visit Exclusive Dresses to Impress at Giveland Mall. Contact number 657-0166. Introducing the new Softex Toilet Tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by BPATS Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The choice is clear. Two Softex toilet tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. The Ghana Elections Commission will commence house-to-house -house registration in your area soon. You must register if you are a Guyanese citizen by birth, descent, naturalization, or registration. 14 years and older by the 31st of October 2019, a citizen of a Commonwealth country living in Guyana for a period of no less than one year preceding the qualifying date. If you were previously registered, you will need to register again. Look out for GCOM. Make it your responsibility to get registered. For more information, contact GCOM on 225-0277-9 or 223-9653. Email pro at gcom.org.gy. Contact the nearest GCOM registration office or visit our website, www.gcom.org.gy. Planning a cleanup? We can help. Sivan's waste management skip bins can be provided for home renovation projects, yard cleanups, or construction sites. It's simple. Step one, just pick up the phone and give us a call. Step two, we deliver the skip bin size of your choice. Step three, load the skip with all of your junk. And finally, step four, we take it all away. It's that simple. Bins are also available in various sizes, so there's no job that's too big or too small. Call Sivan's Waste Management today at 218-1455 or 218-1156. Visit Gaffer's Ironmongery Department for all your building needs. Bolts and nuts, zinc plated, high tensile, anchor bolts and treaded rods. Package nails for your convenience, screws for wood, metal and concrete. Building a fence, we've got cast iron railheads and decorative fencing, gate slides and pivots, laser and barbed wire. For your carpentry needs, we stock tight bond, wood glues and evo stick. Hasps and staples, hinges, butts, catches and brackets, and a wide selection of modern design cupboard handles and knobs. Secure your property and loved ones with quality Yale products such as padlocks, available in several sizes and types. Knobs, lever, deadlocks and decorative door locks. Moving heavy loads is easy with caster wheels and hand trucks that cater for any job. For construction, you've got scaffolding along with ladders, multi-purpose, extended, fiberglass and step ladders too. For everything you need on the one roof, it's Gaffoos, the name you can trust. 
Good evening and welcome to this, our Thursday, August 15, 2019 edition of News Update. I'm Ashley Scotland. Our top story this evening. The ruling of the Chief Justice has confirmed the statement of Jack Deal that house-to-house -house registration is a waste of time as those persons that have already have been registered cannot be deregistered. The exercise now is a waste of time. It's a waste of money. It's futile because even if people refuse to register, their names would still be on the national list, register of registrants. They can't remove your name. Opposition leader Barrett Jagdio. The High Court ruled that the house-to-house -house registration in itself is not unlawful, but during the conduct, persons who were previously registered cannot be removed from the national register of registrants if they are no longer resident in the area. Jagdio today said it is mission accomplished for the PPP. That is what we are arguing, that house to house to create an NRR to, to, to deregister people is unconstitutional. Not that house to house um, activity as a method of verification of names is uh, illegal, unconstitutional. The opposition party said due to the ruling, he believes the GCOM will halt the registration. Godfrey Brooms. MTV News Update. The Seven Member Ghana Elections Commission today met for the first time since the appointment of the new chairperson, but no decisions were made on the holding of imminent elections. Chairperson of the Ghana Elections Commission, Justice Claudette Singh, today presided for the first time over the divided Six Members Commission. Even though the agenda stated that there would have been discussions on the way forward on the holding of regional and general elections, no decisions came out of the meeting. During the meeting, the Chief Elections Officer Keith Lowenfield was told to prepare scenarios which can be used for the imminent elections. What did you discuss today? Yeah, what, what was discussed today? Have, what was discussed today? Commission business. The commission is scheduled to meet on August 20. Justice Singh has formally stated that she is committed to free, fair and transparent elections and will act according to the constitution. The Chief Justice ruled that the removal of names of persons already registered on the National Register of Registrant on the ground of non-residency is unlawful. She also repeatedly emphasized that the current list can be refreshed with the suitable claims and objections, period. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. Opposition leader Barrett Jagdeo has labelled the coalition party a usurper for hanging on in government without any constitutional authority. As such, anything done by the de facto government is illegal, including the extension of an oil agreement with CGX. The High Court yesterday ruled that the Caribbean Court of Justice did not set a date and a timeline for fresh elections. The Chief Justice also noted that the judiciary cannot intervene in the affairs of the other arms of government and set a date for elections. While Attorney General Basil Williams is elated that the court ruled in his government's favor, opposition leader Barrett Jagdeo sought to burst his bubble. But now on the basis, if they think this ruling helped them, well, it really reiterated what we know, but we're prepared to move on, that the government has been a usurper of power since March 21st. And therefore, any act committed after that period, any act that they committed would be deemed null and void. So I saw they, they're extending now the oil contract. I saw CGX got an extension, and I want to say to CGX, it, that extension is not valid that you got because it's done in a period when we have a caretaker government. Jagdeo continued by affirming the coalition party has seized the power unconstitutionally as elections ought to have been held by March 21. There has been no extension by the parliament. Then since March 21st of this year, the government has gone been practicing unconstitutional rule. It has been a usurper of power in Guyana. It is acting outside of the provision of our constitution. The opposition leader reiterated that the opposition party will not facilitate an extension of the life of the government. 
Quatri Brooms, MTV News Update. Civil Society Group Mass Action People's Movement, formerly the Movement Against Parking Meter, today picketed the Minister of the Presidency to up pressure on the President to act in accordance with the Constitution and name a date for general elections. Details from Sandy Ramutar. The Mass Action People's Movement, formerly the Movement Against Sparky Meter, today staged a peaceful protest outside the Ministry of the Presidency, demanding the caretaker government to act in accordance with the Constitution. The civil society grouping is concerned that the current political situation is driving the country into a standstill. Protesters are demanding the President to make a proclamation, dissolving the 11th Parliament, and to fix a date for the regional and general elections. Our Constitution is the supreme law of Guyana. Whether we like the Constitution or we don't like the Constitution or certain aspects of it, until it is changed, we must respect it. Whatever it says, we must respect it. And we must live and abide by the Constitution of Guyana. We can't pick and choose what we would like to abide by and what we cannot abide by. It just goes against the grain of it. So we're out here today to let our government know, our president and our cabinet know, that they need to abide by the Constitution. No, every, th every Thursday we'll be here. Every Thursday, 12 to 1. Un until, until our government realizes that, hey, you must obey the Constitution. That is paramount to every, every citizen. If the government does not respect it, what do we as citizens do? Where, where do we go? Do we also disrespect it? Where do we stand? So we'll be out here at 12 to 1 every Thursday. And I'm a law student to be more precise. So violations in the Constitution mean something to me, okay? So I'm here asking them to please respect our laws of the land. This whole atmosphere right now is actually taken away from what kind of people truly deserve, a free and fair election. And you know, um, CJ has passed the no conference motion. And my personal opinion is that Everything from that point forward has been a delaying tactic. Well, we're out here calling on the government to respect the Constitution. They've been illegal as at March 21st, based on the court ruling. And basically, we're out here calling on them to respect our Constitution, respect 1066 and 1067 of our Constitution. I am extremely disturbed that so much money is being spent on lawyers to do this, which is frankly illogical. I can't see it. I'm very upset. And therefore, the little sign says, I'm trying to look after the rights of the Guyanese and the money of the Guyanese people in the face of incessant stupidity. Because our constitution is being disrespected by the president. There's a reason why. You understand? I and mean, if the president can disrespect the law of Guyana, what happened to the, the normal man like me? But I'm using my discretion to not to disrespect the laws and what's not. You understand I me? Mean? We mean, how is it? Look at the country. Look at the private sector. Look at all the businesses. You understand me? You can know, see what's going on. Huh? Everything run down. Rice, flour, sugar, even chicken, all kind of thing run down. You understand me? So I believe it's high time that they call elections. Right? Uh, Mr. Granger and the GCOM uh, chairman should come together and decide on a date for elections. Now, the budget is set to expire uh, December mountain. So from that time frame onwards, there can't be any new projects because budget is can't pass without uh, parliament. Now parliament can't meet, uh, convene because you already lost no confidence motion. Now we have so many things to do in this country right now. Oil and gas is coming next year and we have nothing uh, ready for oil and gas. Regulations, policies, nothing. All right. So I think it's unfair to our uh, Tusk Guyanese that you're wasting our time when there's so many work to be done in this country, much, very much important work. So I believe you should call elections, right, and then start the Guyanese business because we have a lot to do right now as a people and as a country. Similarly, supporters of the People's Progressive Party have been protesting the streets to up pressure on the president to adhere to the rule of law. President David Granger still to dissolve parliament and name a date for the holding of regional and general elections. All elections were triggered when the no-confidence motion was successfully tabled by the opposition People's Progressive Party. Sandy Ramutar, Frame TV's News Update. Still to come, no retirement of Chris Gale until further notice. This and more when we return. Stay with us.
on windows and doors, fully equipped to handle all your commercial projects. Whether you're constructing a small or large commercial building, residential property, or just upgrading your home, they got you covered. Beeson Windows and Doors, providing unmatched quality windows for your home, office, and commercial building. Located at 1228 Eccles Industrial Site. For more information, call 662-4197 or 226-1292. Enroll at the Elite Art Williams and Harry Wendt Aeronautical Engineering School and graduate with an associate degree in aircraft maintenance engineering at the Eugene F. Karai International Airport, East Coast Damarara. Or call us on 222-2155 or 222-1210. Visit our website, www.aescana.net for more information. The Art Williams and Harry Wendt Aeronautical Engineering School, investing in your future since 1993. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens. Available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26 or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. BM Soat Auto Sales presents Vehicle Leasing. Trade in, in with the old, out with the new. Low down payment deals as low as $500,000. Duty free deals for anyone with a duty free concession. 5% cash back. Buy any vehicle cash and get 5% off instantly. Visit our showroom for more info or call 231 8451 or visit our Facebook page, BM Soat Auto Sales. Mark? I'm in the kitchen. <gasps> this is amazing! I love your tiles. Make an impression with the finest tiles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various tiles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our tiles are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our locations to get the best in tiles. Lens, our product, your creation. Welcome back, you're watching MTV's News Update. Former Health Minister under the People's Progressive Party government, Dr. Leslie Ramsamy, has openly bashed the coalition government for the state of the health sector. Dr. Ramsamy said the all-important sector virtually collapsed. Dr. Leslie Ramsamy, who served as Health and Agriculture Minister during different periods under the PPP government, is not pleased with the state of Guyana's health sector. Dr. Ramsamy, during an interview with this newscast, claimed that the coalition government has diminished the standards of the sector. The public health ministry is headed by Valda Lawrence, who is not a medical professional, but rather a chartered accountant. The, the health sector, like other sectors like agriculture, is collapsing before our eyes. As all these people are here today, the X-ray at Georgetown Hospital is not working. The X-ray at New Amsterdam is not working. The theater at West Demerara and in Surrey are not working. Dr. Ramsamy also called out the minister for her recent statements and challenged her to prove her claim. The cataract surgery which came to an end in May 2015 at the Port Morant Ophthalmology Center. They boasted that they restarted it a few weeks ago when the American military team, medical team was here. And the medical 
team did some cataract surgery. They boasted that surgery has returned to Port Moran Hospital. I challenged the minister with you guys in the media to come with me to Port Moran and show me the one surgery they have done outside of what the U.S. military did. I'm challenging her right now. I am going to go down there, let her come. And in fact, right now, since we will give her time, I will show up at 10 o'clock on Friday morning at the Port Moran Hospital, let her come, and let her show how many surgery were done other than what the U.S. military it did. It's not working. He reminded of the specialty hospital of the PPP, which would, according to the party, revolutionize Guyana's health care system. However, after spending millions of dollars to start the project, it was scrapped under the coalition government. The government had stated that the rest of the sum received from the Bank of India would be used to upgrade the primary health care system. However, ever often, there are shortages of basic drugs at hospitals and health centers. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. The Director of Public Prosecutions, Shalimar Ali Haq, yesterday advised the Ghana Police Force to institute charges against the Deputy Chief Executive Officer of the Chedijagan International Airport for sexual assault based on evidence obtained. In a brief statement, the DPP said that the file of assault committed by the Deputy CEO on a female at the airport has been returned to the force. It was alleged that the sexual assault occurred in the office of the DCEO on July 30, 2018, while the, the duty-free staff was in a meeting with him, he allegedly inappropriately hugged and kissed her on her lips. In her complaint letter, the day after the incident, the woman explained that she went to the DCEO to have an issue with her boss's vehicle resolved. After commitment was given to have security remove the clamp on the vehicle, the woman said she got up to leave and the senior official did the same but walked around his desk to hug her. She recounted that the act was inappropriate. She pulled away but the man allegedly kissed her on the lips. The woman had reported the matter to the airport's chief executive officer and the human resources manager and she was assured that the matter would be investigated. However, months have passed and she had not heard anything. After inquiring, she received a WhatsApp message stating that the issue was addressed but with no details about any actions being taken. The woman later reported the matter to the police. The airport later confirmed that the senior official was being investigated for sexual misconduct and was sent an administrative leave pending the outcome of investigation into the complaint. Nevertheless, a few days later, the DCEO was back on the job while the complainant remained at home. A police source confirmed that the official was placed on $20,000 station bail. Despite the country seeing a 73% pass rate at this year's Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate, with 11,467 students sitting the exams, 57 out of every 100 students failed mathematics. With the 2019 Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate results out and with Guyana gaining a 73% pass rate in comparison to the rest of the Caribbean region, many have raised concerns regarding the country's slow and in some instances stable performances in the subject areas of both mathematics and English language. Mathematics remained constant, gaining 43% in 2019, the same as that gained in 2000. 2018. While English A secured a 77% pass rate, just a short step up from 67% in 2018. Some 11,467 students would have written the CSEC examinations this year with 6 to 7,000 subject entries. With mathematics gaining just 43%, it indicates that 57 out of every 100 students failed the subject. What this means is that for every 1,000 students that wrote mathematics, 570 students failed the subject. As for English language gaining 77%, the figures indicate that 23 students out of every 100 failed the subject. It is as a result of this startling finding that many are questioning why much focus is not being placed on mathematics and English to see improvements. Overall, some 35 subjects were written during this year's CSEC exams. 
Many believe with the addition of more subjects to the CSEC curriculum instead of tackling those are the two most important subject areas is only adding to the overall problem. While 21 other subject areas saw some improvements, seven subject areas remained constant and seven fell below the percentage rate of those written in 2018. Among the two high-performing subject areas are agriculture science, double award, gaining 99% compared to 97% in 2018. 2018 and agriculture science a single award gaining 96 percent compared to 87 percent in 2018 and religious education gaining 100 percent compared to 68 percent in 2018 reporting from tv news update lashona gomes cornelius the Education Ministry moments ago announced that the 2019 top performer at the Caribbean Advanced Proficiency Examination in Guyana is Shinome Milling of St. Rose's High School and not Michael Bhopal as was announced on Wednesday. Milling, according to the Ministry, wrote 11 units and achieved 9 grade 1s and 2 grade 2s. However, the Ministry apologizes for the irregularity regarding the top position while noting that this should not distract from the excellent and historical performance by students at both the Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate and CAPE assessments. A thorough investigation is to be conducted into the death of Presidential Guard Winston Cooper, who on July 1 was found unconscious on Mandela Avenue with multiple injuries to the body and head. Cooper, who never regained consciousness, died yesterday on his arrival at the Georgetown Public Hospital. Six weeks after being found unconscious on Mandela Avenue opposite the National Gymnasium with injuries to the head and body, 32-year-old police constable Winston Cooper succumbed to his injuries. Cooper was found in July 1 about 5.30 hours. Discharged on August 6 after spending several weeks in the intensive care unit of the Georgetown Public Hospital without regaining consciousness, Cooper was said to have been recuperating at home. But in a sudden turn of events, relatives of Cooper claimed his breathing became funny sounding. The man was quickly rushed back to the hospital but later succumbed on arrival. Cooper was stationed as a presidential guard. On the day he was found unconscious, packed inside his haversack, was his presidential guard uniform. Police initially suspected that the man may have been a victim of a hit and run or a random robbery and that the perpetrators or perpetrator may have fled the scene after realizing that he was a police officer. During a visit to the relatives of Cooper, caretaker President David Granger promised that the circumstances surrounding the incident which led to the death of Winston Cooper will be investigated by the Ghana Police Force. A post-mortem is scheduled for Friday. Reporting from TV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. Harrison Griffith with today's health tip. A chronic cough is a cough that lasts eight weeks or longer in adults or four weeks in children. A chronic cough is more than just an annoyance. It can interrupt your sleep and leave you feeling exhausted. Severe cases of chronic cough can cause vomiting, lightheadedness, and even rib fractures. Symptoms A chronic cough can occur with other signs and symptoms which may include a runny or stuffy nose, a feeling of liquid running down the back of your throat, frequent throat clearing and sore throat, hoarseness, wheezing and shortness of breath, heartburn or a sour taste in your mouth, in rare cases coughing up blood. Causes An occasional cough is normal since it helps clear irritants and secretions from your lungs and prevents infection. However, a cough that persists for weeks is usually the result of a medical problem. In many cases, more than one cause is involved. The following causes, alone or in combination, are responsible for the majority of cases of chronic cough. 1. Post-nasal drip when your nose or sinuses produce extra mucus, it can drip down the back of your throat and trigger your cough reflex. 2. Asthma An asthma-related cough may come and go with the seasons, appear after an upper respiratory tract infection, or become worse when you're exposed to cold air or certain chemicals or fragrances. 3. Infections A cough can linger long after other symptoms of pneumonia, flu, a cold, or other infection of the upper respiratory tract have gone away. 4. Blood pressure drugs these are known to cause chronic cough in some people. Risk factors Being a current or former smoker is one of the leading risk factors for chronic cough. Frequent exposure to secondhand smoke can also lead to coughing and lung damage. Complications Having a persistent cough can be exhausting. 
Coughing can cause a variety of problems including sleep disruption, headache, dizziness, vomiting, excessive sweating, loss of bladder control, fractured ribs, passing out. Treatment. Determining the cause of chronic cough is crucial to effective treatment. In many cases, more than one underlying condition may be causing your chronic cough. If you are currently smoking, your doctor will discuss with you your readiness to quit and provide assistance to achieve this goal. Medications used to treat chronic cough may include 1. Antihistamines, corticosteroids and decongestants. These drugs are standard treatment for allergies and post-nasal drip. 2. Inhaled asthma drugs. These reduce inflammation and open up your airways. 3. Antibiotics. If a bacterial, fungal, or mycobacterial infection is causing your chronic cough, your doctor may prescribe medications to address the infection. When lifestyle changes don't take care of acid reflux, you may be treated with medications that block acid production. However, some people need surgery to resolve the problem. Lifestyle and Home Remedies Follow the plan your doctor gives you for treating the cause of your cough. In the meantime, you can also try these tips to ease your cough. Drink fluids. Liquid helps thin the mucus in your throat. Warm liquids such as broth, tea, or juice can soothe your throat. Suck on cough drops or hard candies. These may ease a dry cough and soothe an irritated throat. Consider taking honey. A teaspoon of honey may help loosen a cough. Don't give honey to children younger than one year old because honey can contain bacteria harmful to infants. Finally, avoid tobacco smoke. Smoking or breathing secondhand smoke irritates your lungs and can worsen coughs caused by other factors. If you smoke, talk with your doctor about programs and products that can help you quit. Here's Rajesh Lakhan with What Do People Say? Since the Caribbean Court of Justice ruled that a no-confidence motion was passed and elections must be held in three months, our question is, should the president provide a date for election now? Let's hear what the people had to say. As an ordinary citizen, I believe that the rule of law should be respected, especially by those who are in a particular office, who hold those offices, because when you're in that office, you set an example, you set a precedent to the people who look up to you. Um, and if you don't follow the ruling of a court, then what does that say to us, the ordinary people? For me, it kind of smacks of um, when we break the law, we are forced, so we have to, we have no choice but to respect the law, whatever the law says. We have to go to jail, or we got to pay a fine, or we got to do those things. And, um, so, it, to me, it should be respected um, and followed because our politicians are in office and they're supposed to be setting an example for us to follow. Um, it says that there is a difference when you have power and when you don't have power. When you have power, you have the opportunity to break the law, to disrespect the law. When you don't have power and you're an ordinary man, you you have to face the consequences. So that, that's just what I think. I'll tell you the truth, I fed up. Because I fed up when I have to turn on the, the radio or the television and know that, oh God, these people still with the CCJ thing or this, um, this no confidence motion or with this um what you call it the the the, the um gcom chairman and this no this thing should have done stop already okay it's in the constitution and we gotta go by the constitution the government gotta go by the constitution okay but right now we need to put it a stop we had enough of this let's just do what we have to do and whoever win that's it we have to still live we still have to work and just let the country go ahead because this is just slowing up Guyana. Mm. It's pretty straightforward. 33 is a majority than 32. So initially, the 
decision was straightforward. There is no simple majority and absolute majority. There is, those words are not in the Constitution. Well, if he is going to follow the CCJ ruling, he should do the elections in three months. Well, the president is not the one who so also announce the election. The, the president's duty here is to see that the, the GCOM have a chairman, that in the president time, even appoint in the coalition, then they appoint somebody to Jack Dior and he choose. He didn't refuse, he choose. But why the president now is running away from the facts? That why when Jack Dior choose somebody, you don't want it? This is not the constitution law. And when, when they was fighting against and making things with the Robert Tart time, we choose. The other opposite party choose. And the election go on and then when everybody feel good about it. But no, if you for the people, you're supposed to choose a person that the opposition give to you and win them again. Yeah, but you're not doing so that means you're fair. If you for the people, then you're fair. You're fair the people them. Because more you do things is more you're fair in the people. If you ain't take none of the opposition list. I feel that they're putting themselves to have a demote out of the seat. This is the only way. Or within the three month period. Yes. Or even a month, I mean find nobody. I think they feel to myself they feel that the the law should take it arms into the high court or whatever, and them should also be step out. And let a, a election let the law fix a election. Let the court fix the election. And who win, take it, yeah. For MTV News Update, I'm Rajesh Lakan. Coming up after the break, MTV's Sport Update and more. Stay with us. Buy Gafur standard size aluminium windows and save more than 20% compared to buying custom sizes. On standard PVC sash windows, you'll get a 20% discount. On standard aluminium sash windows, awning windows, casement windows, sliding windows, shop fronts, and showcases, get a 15% discount. Get special discounts on other items manufactured by Gafus, such as PVC pipes, 10% discount. Water tanks, 200 gallons to 1,600 gallons, 12% discount. BRC fabric, 10% discount, whilst chain link fencing has a 15% discount. For your roofing, we now have Aliasing corrugated sheets at special prices, plus a 10% discount and 10% discounts for galvanized purlings too. Our hollow blocks made from sand and sifting in 4 inches and 6 inches, pressure tested to 1800 PSI, now with a 15% discount, while steel rods have a 10% discount. So visit Gafu's Macdum location or any one of our other 6 locations countrywide for these special offers. Gafu's the leaders for quality, service, and price. Secure your property, secure your life, get the best security service from us at KGM Security Services Incorporated. Highly trained armed and unarmed officers at affordable rates. We offer armed mobile patrols, personal security, cash escort, alarm monitoring, quick response units, also rental of executive vehicles with armed guards. 74 Axora Avenue, Bel Air Park, Georgetown. Contact us on 663-3227-699-0084 or 654-1800. KGM Security Services Incorporated. We are your source for security. Friday 16th to Sunday 18th August, Cliff Anderson Sports Hall comes alive with the Guyana Amateur Boxing Association 4th Annual Caribbean School Boys and Junior Boxing Tournament. It's a Caribbean invasion. Boxers from Haiti, Barbados, Cayman Islands, Trinidad and Tobago, Guyana, St. Lucia, Dominica, Grenada, Jamaica and more. Admission stands $500 and ringside $1,500 and starting time 6 p.m. The Caribbean School Boys and Junior Boxing Tournament from Friday 16th to Sunday 18th August. Come out! and represent!
Did you know almost one third of deaths in Guyana are heart related? Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol clogged arteries. You can now lower high triglyceride levels with Omega XL and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. So to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. Apply now for your discount card at Tayo Future Shop. Every time you shop using your discount card, your percentage increases. Start from 5% off. Your next purchase, 7% off. Then, 10% off, etc. Until you start getting wholesale and factory price. Check in store for more details. Conditions apply. Help hey, me get me Tayo discount card. <laughs> Wait, man. Why you gotta do next, man? Buy the whole entire store? Over the years, ISG has been providing all sectors across Guyana with quality products and outstanding customer service. Proud distributor of NP and Ultra lubricants, engineered for tropical conditions. International trucks and parts, leading the change. SEM Machinery, a Caterpillar brand, SKF bearings and mounted products, NAPA batteries, Tide power generators, discover the greatest source of power. Industrial Supply of Guyana Inc., the best opportunity to make the right choice. West Indies failed to tame irresistible India captain Virat Kohli, and he stroked his second successive 100, the 43rd of his career, to spearhead a remarkable run chase, leading his side to a six wicket victory on the Duckworth Lewis Stern method in a rain marred third My Team 11 Wanda International, co sponsored by Skoda and KEI. Veteran opener Chris Gale had blasted 72 from 41 balls as West Indies raced to a competitive 240 for seven off their rain reduced allotted 35 overs. After they chose to bat in the contest at the Queen's Park Oval. His opening partner Evan Lewis scored 43, Nicholas Puran made with a quick fire 30, Shimon Hetimaya got 25 and Shai Hope added 24. Under the Duckworth Lewis Stern method, India were set a daunting 255 for victory from their 35 overs after rain had caused a near three and a half hour break during West Indies' innings but Kohli led the charge as they effortlessly chased down the target with 15 balls remaining to take the three match series to nil leaving the host to ponder their 13th defeat in the 22 ODIs this year. Dropped an 11 in the 6th over by wicketkeeper Shai Hope off Seema Kimo Paul, Kohli made West Indies pay for the error. Kohli carved out an undefeated 114 off 99 deliveries to follow up his 120 in last Sunday's second ODI at the same venue, making him a shoo-in for the play of the match and play of the series awards. Shriyas Aya supported with an entertaining 65 of 41 balls and left-handed opener Shikhar Dawan gathered a run a ball 36 as Indian manager run chase, which could have proved tricky. Let's take a look at how the action unfolded. This we want to see. Goes over mid off. One bounce into the boundary. Another expensive over. 18 coming off it. Oh, too easy. Short. Pulled over mid wicket. 
Half century to the universe boss. Oh, it beats him. Again, toe end of the bat. Slog sweep. It's very high in the air. Shikhar Dhawan circling underneath it and takes it. Ask us for a wicket. Spill a catch to Dawan. That's been smashed. You can spread the field. Has it gone straight to him? Yes. You're talking about Khalil. Could he have gotten a break? But he gets the breakthrough. More of uh, in position. This will be four. Is it like Baez who was there on inside edge? What a shot. We know how good a player he is against spin. We've seen that in first class cricket and in the ODIs. It's pretty much run a ball at the moment, 31 of 29. He was not in control for a call from another century. Gets it away. Cooley was dropped on 11. Uh, gets into the boundary line. Evan Lewis again diving. And now. Clipped away. Will this be the moment? Yes. Virat Kohli punches the air. He's been there from the start. And he's there to the end to see India with yet another victory and a serious win. Many thought West Indies batsman Chris Gill's 301st One Day International would be his last, except for the man himself. Here's more. Gale, 39, scored 72 in his size defeat by India in what had been expected to be his final match. But the opener, who recently surpassed Brian Lara's ODI run record for a West Indian, which now stands at 10,480, is playing on until further notice. In June, Gale reversed his original decision to retire after the World Cup. Gale, who usually wears a number 45, wore a specially printed shirt with a number 301 on the back for the third ODI against India at the Queen's Park Oval in Trinidad on Wednesday. But his 72 of 41 balls, 62 of those scored in boundaries, was not enough to help his side avoid defeat and the 2 0 series loss. Gale left the field waving his bat aloft, soaking up the warm and prolonged applause from the crowd, a gesture indicating that would be the last time he would be wearing West Indies colours. But in a post match interview, he clarified that his time in the maroon is not yet over. Question everybody is asking, have you retired from ODI? I didn't have and I didn't announce anything any retirement. <laughs> so you're still with us? Yeah, until a year further notice. Oh, okay. Have you retired from ODI? I didn't have, a, and I didn't announce anything any retirement. <laughs> so you're still with us? Yeah, until a year further notice. Oh, okay. India captain Virat Kohli's impressive 140 not out helped his side to a six-wicket victory on the DLS method, and he was also swept up by the occasion, gushing about how Gale was a gem of a human being and always kind, as a tribute to his former Royal Challengers Bangalore teammate upon his retirement. But retired, not retired, Gale said after the game, I didn't announce any retirement. West Indies captain Jason Holder said to his knowledge, Gale has not retired. He, however, said Gale's power hitting yesterday was an example of his career. He was entertaining, he showed presence, and that's just what people have come to expect from Chris Gale over the years. In reversing his original retirement decision during the World Cup, Jamaican Gale also revealed he wanted to play in an upcoming test match against India on home soil, but he has not been selected in the squad. The first match of the two test series begins on August 22 at the Sir Vivian Richard Stadium in Antigua. Celine Griffith reporting for MTV Sports Update. St. Lucia Zooks will replace the St. Lucia Stars for the 2019 CPL season following the recent termination of the participation agreement with the company operating the Stars franchise. The Zooks will be playing matches in St. Lucia and across the Caribbean in this year's CPL which takes place from the 4th of November to the 12th of October according to an article on the CPL website. The Zooks was the, was the name of the St. Lucia franchise when it was founded in 2013 and it still resonates with cricket fans around the world. St. Lucia is one of four islands in the Caribbean known for its Zook music, making it the perfect name for the St. Lucian team. The logo is a colorful mixture of blues and yellows with a flame symbol that is derived from the national coat of arms, representing a desire to win. The Zooks will be playing 10 group games during the tournament, starting with a match, match against Guyana Amazon Warriors in Guyana on the 5th of September. 
They will visit Trinidad for a game against Trinbago Knight Riders on the 8th of September, Jamaica for the game against the Talawas on the 12th of September, and St. Kitts to play the Patriots on the 17th of September. They will then play five matches at home between the 20th of September and the 27th of September. Their final group game will, be, will see them take on Barbados Tridents on the 29th of September. As the countdown begins to the start of the CONCACAF Nations League in the September-November window, a 31-man Guyana-based provisional squad has been selected to begin training this Thursday at the Guyana Football Federation National Training Center, Providence. The squad, comprising four goalkeepers, 11 defenders, 10 midfielders and 6 forwards, also has 7 first-timers who will be competing for a chance to earn their debut in the senior national squad. According to Charles Pollard, the Golden Jaguars assistant coach and lead for the Guyana-based team preparation, the squad was selected by a technical panel, including head coach Michael Johnson. Pollard said the first sessions will prioritize fitness, which will be led by Toledo. He said fitness in the sport, especially during this time, can be underestimated. So while some of the guys have been actively engaged in tournaments, others may not have been so active. So the fitness regime will test this to determine their overall readiness and will also point us to areas to focus on. The fitness evaluation is scheduled for Saturday. Guyana will be, play three home game and three away matches, with the first one on September 6 against Aruba and Curacao, then one on Sept October 9 against Jamaica here, followed by Antigua and Barbuda on October 11 in Antigua. Guyana will then host Antigua in the return leg on October 14, followed by Aruba here on November 15, before traveling to Jamaica to take on the Reggae Boys on November 18. More news after the break. Stay with us. Ready to ride away a winner on a brand new motorcycle? With Ultra Lubricants, Oil & Go, it's so easy. Purchase any Ultra Lubricants at an authorized dealer. Get your coupon, fill it out, drop it in the box, and you can be one of six lucky Ultra winners to ride off on a bike. And here's the secret tip. Get two chances to win when you purchase Ultra Power Max 4T. Ride away a winner. Oil & Go with Ultra Lubricants. Promotion runs from 1st of March to the 31st of August. Conditions apply. See press and Facebook for details. Ultra Lubricants. Distributed by Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. and available nationwide. Welcome back. You're still with MTV's News Update. Now for some news in the region. A British woman has died in Barbados after, after being doused in flammable liquid and set alight while in bed. Natalie Critchlow's Natalie shocked and devastated family are raising funds to repatriate her body. Miss Critchlow, 44, of Collindale in London, was in Barbados to look after her disabled brother when she was attacked. The mother of three had survived cancer twice and had two strokes in the past decade, according to her niece. Ashley Best said her aunt suffered 75% burns to her body in the attack in Christchurch on the 20th of July. She died in the hospital on the 6th of August. Ms. Best said the intruder broke in the house and strangled her and then set her alight. She went into hospital and died of her injuries. On international scale, Israel is blocking two U.S. Democratic lawmakers and prominent critics of Israel from visiting. E Ilan Omar and Rashida Talib were due to visit the occupied, the occupied West Bank and East Jerusalem next week. Both have supported the boycott movement against Israel, but Israeli law in allows supporters of the campaign to be banned from visiting. President Trump earlier tweeted it would show great weakness if the peer were allowed entry. On Thursday, Mr. Trump took to Twitter to urge that they be blocked from visiting, adding that they hate Israel and all Jewish people and there is nothing that can be said or done to change their minds. The two US, the two US lawmakers have yet to comment on the decision. And that has brought us to the end of regional and international news. Now let's take a look at the Guyana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 838. Let's turn our attention to the Denver Harbor Bridge and Burbies River Bridge schedules.
And that's our up on today's broadcast. Before we go, here's a reminder of our top stories. Chief Justice's ruling confirms House to House registration is a waste of time, says Jack Yeo. No decision at GCA meeting. Civil society stage protests as Persian monks and Granger to name date for elections. Education minister mixes up Cape Top student. And in sport, no retirement of Chris Gale until further notice. Catch a rebroadcast at 23 hours today and at 6 hours 30 tomorrow. On behalf of Free News and Technical Teams, I'm Ashley Scotland. Good night.